This is LabMates, and today we're going to explore Venom. So first of all, what is venom? Well, it's not the same thing as poison. For starters, a poison is just a substance that is harmful to an organism, and therefore there is an inexhaustible number of these. Even substances you wouldn't normally think of as poison can be poisonous. It all depends on the dose. For example, caffeine or black licorice can be poisonous, not just in the quantities people usually consume. An example of a poisonous animal is the poison dart frog. It lives in the rainforest of Central and South America, and if disturbed, will secrete toxins via glands on its neck and back. This frog is poisonous. However, this frog is not venomous. Venom is a poison evolved for a specific purpose, to be actively injected by the organism. 450 species of snakes are venomous, and the venom is injected through the fangs. Jellyfish deliver venom through their venom-filled structure found in their tentacles. There are actually some venomous frogs out there too, brunos and greenings, that have spiny bone protrusions to deliver venom. Blue-ringed octopuses are amazing, as not only are they poisonous if swallowed, they're super venomous if they bite you. Their venom is 1,000 times more powerful than cyanide, and one little octopus has enough of it to kill 26 humans in minutes. Well, now that we know that venom is a specialized form of poison, Time to find out what it actually is. And the best way to do so is to try to figure out how it works. There are many different organisms that have evolved to have venom. On Earth and underwater. Vertebrates and invertebrates, predators and prey. This convergent evolution leads to a widespread selection of venoms. But how did organisms get venoms in the first place? Well, you see, Genes coding for venoms probably started out as genes for other things. Some venoms are closely related to immune system proteins, while others to digestive enzymes, or perhaps both. To explain, let's use Barry the snake. Barry the snake lives in a time when most snakes of his kind aren't venomous. But Barry has a random mutation that allows him to produce venom. The venom has a negative effect on prey animals that Barry hunts and eats allowing Barry to catch more prey and survive. So Barry the snake and other venom-producing snakes of his species are favored by natural selection. They have a higher chance of surviving, reproducing, and passing on their gene for venom. Over time, the phenotype of venom producing becomes common. The snakes evolve other aspects that help them, like a big pointy fang to deliver venom better. Venoms evolve and adapt to their environment, becoming specialized. There are different types of venoms. Here are some of the most common ones. Neurotoxins. They affect the nervous system of the victim. They can block or overstimulate the nervous system, so the victim suffers from paralysis, convulsions, and difficulty breathing. Hemotoxins. They affect the circulatory system. The effects usually start with swelling, and move on to internal bleeding, hemorrhaging, and cell death. Myotoxins, they affect the muscles. The victim's muscles are literally destroyed. Not pleasant. So knowing all those things about the dangers of venom, you might be panicking, or not. Anyway, you should know what to do in case you or someone else encounters a venomous organism. First, don't panic. Panicking will make your heart rate go up and the venom spread faster. Try not to think about that while trying not to panic. Second, do not attempt the mythical cure such as sucking out the venom or cutting it out or urinating on the affected body part. Those are all big no-nos that will actually make the situation worse. Instead, call emergency medical services and do not move the affected part of your body if possible. You should be aware of what venomous things live in your area and what to do in case of dealing with those particular things. Google this, especially if you're in a country that's new to you. Also, know what the recovery position is. You can find this on the NHS website. If you don't know this, then pause the video and go read it right now. 
It might save your life, or the lives of your loved ones, or the lives of complete strangers. Or maybe you'll never need those skills, but better safe than sorry. Know your first aid staff, people. But venom isn't just this big bad thing that other animals have and we're all terribly scared of. No, throughout history, people have been studying and using venom in all sorts of interesting ways. You see, opportunistic humans have long been using venom against prey, other humans, disease and venom itself. One of the first uses of venom is coating arrows with it to kill prey and enemy. Remember Hercules of myth with magical arrows that make you very deadly very fast? I mean, sure, the poison came from the blood of the Hydra, but you understand what I'm getting at, right? 2000 years ago, Scythian warriors coated arrows with viper venom, as well as other even more disgusting things. Another interesting historic example is the Siege of Hatra of 198. The inhabitants rained venomous arthropods, probably desert scorpions and assassin bugs, down on the attacking Roman army. The siege lasted just 20 days before the Romans gave up. On a more peaceful note, humans have managed to turn venom against one enemy that really deserves it, venom itself. Usually agreed to have been first developed in 1895 by the French scientist Albert Calmet, antivenom is a counteragent to venom. What do I mean? Well, let's go back to Barry the Snake. Barry the Snake is not being a very good snake because he's bitten a person. And remember, Barry is venomous, so the venom is wreaking all sorts of havoc on the human body. So it's necessary to neutralize it and stop further damage from happening. To do that, we need a snake. Not just any old snake, but a snake of the same species that bit the patient. Then, we can collect the snake's venom. This venom is introduced into an animal, and the animal's immune system produces antibodies. Blood is drawn from the animal, plasma is separated, antibodies are then separated, concentrated and formulated into an antivenom. This antivenom is then injected into the patient. Seems pretty old-fashioned, right? Having to get some poor marry the sheep to make the necessary antivenom? It is. Old fashioned, that is, because it's exactly the same method our friend Albert, if you remember him, used in 19th century Vietnam. It's complicated, it's possibly animal cruelty, and it's also very specific. There is no universal cure for getting envenomated. If we didn't know that it's Barry the snake who's been in the patient, we would be in some serious trouble. Sure, antivenoms don't have to be monovalent, they can be polyvalent, effective against multiple species, but still, if we'd given the patient cobra antivenom and their bite was from a different snake, they'd possibly be dead. You see, different venoms are so, well, different that a cure for all remains a scientific dream. Maybe you're the person who's going to help it come true? Another interesting use of venom in medicine is to make all sorts of drugs. Remember how different venoms can differently affect their victims' bodies? Well, what if the effect was one we actually wanted? Now, to step away for a second from modern science, isn't it interesting how fascinating humanity is with venomous things, especially snakes? I know I am. And lots of people throughout history were too. There's evidence that Romans added venom to all sorts of medicines to treat, say, smallpox, leprosy, fever, and wounds. There's also the thing with snake oil. You might have heard somebody say that phrase because in the modern world, snake oil is used to describe any worthless pseudo-remedy that simply doesn't work. Care and offer to cure COVID, your pimples and your love life using magic crystals? She's a snake oil salesman, but for quite some time, snakes boiled in oil were thought to actually be beneficial for all sorts of ailments. And little kind of bits of snake on your face were meant to make you prettier. So, it might seem silly now, but every mistake along the way has helped us explore the possibilities venom brings to use in modern medicine. Because it is used, and it is useful. Think about it. Hemotoxic venom, like that found in this snake, the Bothropsia araca, or simply a type of pit viper. This venom can make you bruise, blister, bleed out, and hemorrhage. But, ACE inhibitors, which are used by those with heart failure to relax and open up blood vessels, making it easier for the heart to pump blood around. This medicine was developed 
from a peptide found in the venom of the snake. Cool, right? So, venom, both a dangerous curse, claiming thousands of lives a year, and a wonderful cure. See you next time.